guides in print. It, that's a tough thing to keep up with nowadays, so I kind of took it to a, a digital level. I uh, started this website, and if, if you haven't ever been to the site, uh, thank you for coming uh, this afternoon and, and hearing about this. And it's uh, my attempt to sort of help people when they're buying and selling their games. Uh, it started, and if you have questions as we go along, just holler out. It, it started because as I started my collection about seven or eight years ago, I bought a Super Mario Brothers from a co-worker. And I paid $1,800 for it. I didn't know if the co-worker was screwing me on the price or if I just got the best deal in the world. So I started looking around on the internet, everybody that everybody does, and I found uh, the Boston Re Boston Price, uh, which was on a Boston Repair site. I found uh, a place called Pin uh, Pinball Price with a singular dot com. That was about three years out of date. Uh, so was the Boston one and Pin Site. But I didn't feel like the true price was really represented by any one site. So Pinside has their site, you know, has their published the uh, prices uh, if you agree to it. But it wasn't really explaining the entire market because people were buying pinballs all over the place. So this is, you know, based on the sample of, of pinball data that, that is out there. Uh, and the first thing we need to talk about is uh, the data. Because if you don't have confidence in the data and what's in my database, then um, the whole thing kind of falls apart. So let me explain a little bit about where this data comes from, how we get it, and you know what we hope to do in the future here. So there's three main sources of information now that I use uh, to gather the data. And I'll show you some shots of the website if you haven't been there before, or if you're not presently on your phone looking at the site. Uh, and that's Pinside. Pinside has a lot of good, obviously, sales information probably the number one online site for selling. It used to be eBay, used to be Craigslist. Those things really have gone down uh, lately. But Pinside has a lot. They don't have everything, obviously, because you don't have to agree to show the sales price. But there are a lot. About one in three sold machines uh, on, on Pinside will list the price that they sold it for. So. Auction sites are another source. There are a lot of online au auction sources that will freely give you the price, the hammer price, and then uh, for my data, I take the hammer, hammer price and then add whatever their auction fees are, and they can be substantial. I've seen them as high as 27%. So if you think somebody's buying, a, getting a great buy on a, you know, $2,000 machine that they're paying 27%, they're they're paying a lot more than $2,000 for that machine. So you got to take that into account. And that's the price that I show you on the site is the is the real price of it. eBay used to be the site where you know a few years ago uh, about 30% or so of my sales in my data, the database came from eBay. People are moving away from eBay. Primary re primary reason for that is Facebook Marketplace. You know that's just, and it's good for buying and selling. It's bad for me because no way to to scrape that data to get that data. Uh, what the machine actually sold for. The database itself um, has 11,600 plus uh, rows of data. They were all hand entered. They're not, I don't scrape the websites for information. Uh, they're all hand, hand entered by, by me over the last six or seven years. Uh, and they're verified and checked. One of the neat things about this site is that you, it will give you the link to that actual sale. So if you're looking at a, you know, Godzilla that sold for $6,500 or something, you can click on that link. And it'll take you right to that sale site. So where eBay, the, the link lasts for about 90 days, and then they take it off. I currently have uh, 1,422 different titles of pinball machines. That's a small fraction of all the pinball machines that have ever been made. But I think it's a pretty substantial database, and that includes the LEs, you know, pros, premiums. So each of those is counted. And the database, if you add up all the sales that I track, there's about $47 million worth of pinballs that are accounted for in the database. 
Uh, again, a small fraction, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but that's a small fraction of what's really out there. And one of the ways, I wrote a couple of articles uh, for This Week in Pinball and also The Kineticist uh, talking about pinflation over the last couple of years. And one of the issues with that was if I just threw all the data together and gave you a yearly average, you're going to get a different mix. So maybe one year there's a lot of EMs in the database, one year there's you know newer machines coming in. They're all used. I don't list any new prices. They're all used. But I have gone through and weighted the data so every year is comparable to each other. And the way I do that is by breaking up the the history of pinball really into six different eras. So there's electromechanical, huge amount of time in that group, basically everything before 1977. So you'll see prices in there and you can look at the average prices uh, when we look at the data in a minute by each of those uh, classifications. So early solid states, you can see that. You may not agree with the exact dates on this, but there's a lot of lap o uh, overlap, uh, especially between early, you know, the EMs and the early solid states. Uh, the one thing I found, and you can see the rest there, the, the one thing I found, uh, I, I changed, ended up changing the name, the modern DMD era, which is a 16, 17 year period, I first had it labeled Stern DMD. Because I don't, you know, if you're newer to pinball, Stern complete, you think they dominate now. In this 16 year period, from 1999 to 2015, uh, there was only, I believe, I don't have my notes up here. There were only eight other, pin, there were eight pinball titles that were released in a 16-year period that were not Stern. In that same time, Stern released over 40 different titles. And that does not include Ellie's premiums and pros. That is just the title itself. Uh, so they just completely dominated the market uh, in this period that I call, I had it labeled as Stern DMD, but someone suggested let's change that because there are a few other machines that came in there. And of course, the next is the LCD era, which we're in currently. I'm not sure when, you know, what we'll call the next era of, of pinball, but for right now, that's what I use. And you can look up averages and I track the way pinflation or deflation works by these six errors so they don't. Uh, mix in with each other. And the data, you know, the data is a sample, okay? It's obviously not a census of every pinball machine that's been sold. It's a sample. And a couple of years ago on Facebook and on Pinside, I ran a poll saying, where did you buy the very last machine you bought, used pinball machine you bought, where did you buy it from? And you can see the answers here. It's mostly friends and Facebook, and then third is Pinside. I think a few years ago, the eBay and Craigslist would have been a lot higher. But all my data doesn't come from that. My data, as I said, comes from the auction sites. So we're only catching maybe a third of all the sales to even possibly put into the database. But I think it represents a pretty good sample of things. And it seems to fit, especially with the that I'm able to get the pin side data. The website itself, again, if you haven't been here, thank you for coming to the seminar because I'm not sure why, but uh, this is some screenshots. You can go on your phone right now, pinballprices.com, and take a look at this. It's a pretty straightforward site, I think. Uh, it has a couple other things other than the price guide. Uh, it has some price trends you can look at, and we'll see some of those in a minute. It also has pinball links. Just, you know, most pinball sites have links to other sites. That's what this covers. From there, if you go to the home page, which is the one on the left, you click price guide or you hit pinball prices or whatever, it'll take you to the search site. And in the search site, you've got the search box there. You start typing in maybe G-O-D, God, and you uh, hit search, you'll come up with all the Godzillas. And from there, you select the, God, the, the, uh, the pinball machine you want, and that takes you to sort of the, uh, the website page that it has a picture of, Tells you what the title is that you're looking at, a picture of it, and the average price by year. And that's great to know. And in, in this one, it, this was taken a couple of months ago. In 2024, I've you know I've entered 13 sales for Godzilla Premium, and the average is $9,200. Well, 
Maybe you're saying, well, I sold mine for a lot less. I sold mine for a lot more. This is the average price. So everybody is going to be either below or above that or right on the average. So uh, it does give you on the set, on this right hand side of the screen, it does give you the detail. Every sales, all 13 of those that are in the database for 2024 are listed to the right and you can scroll through those. And it gives you the links to where to, you can go look at the site itself. It also gives you the condition of those machines. And that condition of the machine is self-reported. So if they listed it as mint on Pinside, you know, no matter what it was, I'm going to put mint on here. I don't, I can't go and look at every machine that's sold out there. So that's the buyers and that's listed in the website. It's the buyers, you know, interpretation of the, you know, the, the uh, condition of it. So again, I, th I think the uniqueness of our site is that, you know, you can go and look at each and every, every one to see, well, it says it's in good condition. What does that mean? Or it says it's a project machine. You can go and, and look at those. Uh, we're going to take a look uh, in depth at all the metadata and how my website is set up. No, we're not. That's just, uh, but metadata is data about data, right? Uh, information about data. So just a little bit more about the website. The oldest machine we have in there is the 1931 Baffle Ball. Um, the newest that we have that have, has actually sold as a used machine is John Wick. So we're covering 93 years of pinball. Now, granted, most all of them are newer machines uh, than this, but it does cover a wide range of machines. It's tougher, and the numbers are lower with the older machines, but it is helpful, you know, to go back and look at some of the older machines, even if you just have one or two sales of that. The most expensive average used pinball machine, no surprise to anybody, is Jersey Jack's Pirates. Uh, with an average price right now of $27,000. So uh, there's been some sold for 30. There's there's one that was recently sold, I think, for 22, something like that. So this, you know, uh, it's a pretty hefty price. This is not the most expensive machine or average machine on the site. It's just one that you can regularly get. The most expensive one I've ever seen. Anybody? Modern game that's out there that would... The Supreme. Why? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not in the generation of skaters uh, that get what Supreme is. But Supreme is a luxury brand. It is iconic. It very expensive products. It started out uh, for as uh, skate gear, street hip hop, all, all sorts of different groups have sort of uh, taken to Supreme. From what I was reading the other night, it's kind of on its way down, so maybe these prices will come down. But this was the contract machine that I believe Stern did uh, for Supreme, and they sold out the first day they were listed. Now, I'm not sure what the original price was. I think it was upper 20s. Uh, but this is, uh, I've seen them sold as hold uh, for above $60,000. They're not pinball people buying this. These are Supreme uh you know, I don't, I don't know. Fanatics, yes, thank you. The machine that we have the most data on, this sort of surprised me when I did these calculations and looking at it. I thought it was going to be the Adams, Adams Family or Twilight Zone. You know, you look at the numbers. But the machine that is, is always out there and has sold more and more in the last couple of years than any other machine is clearly Godzilla. So just in the in the three years that it's been out there, there's a hundred. I have 135 records of sales if you count the LE, Premium, and Pro. So it's just really dominated. Uh, the runner-up to this was sort of a surprise to me. It was Simpsons Pinball Party. So that gets moved around a lot. And that's one of the things you, you know. I was surprised by that too, but it, it does. It comes up frequently as I'm going through the data. Uh, so what have we learned from the data? And I don't know how we're doing on time, but I think we're okay. Um, I've tried to take a look at this and, and see what we can learn. I, a couple of years ago, I looked at, actually last year, 
I looked at all the data that I had and tried to figure out a way, because I was interested in how big is the used pinball market? I mean, are we talking a couple million? Are we talking a, you know, half a billion? What are we talking about with how many pinball machines? I love this picture, by the way. Uh, this guy is, is contributing his best to the average of 71 pinball machines a day. Um, so when I was adding all this up and looking at, okay, our website captures X amount of the entire market, and it seems to only capture about 5% of the, all the sales that have happened. So I calculated that. I do market research and statistics for a living, and I do market forecasting for pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so I'm pretty good with market forecasting, and this was the number I came up with, $143 million. So that's each and every year, well, at least in 2022, there was $143 million worth of used pinball machines changing hands. That's based on the, the average price for each of those errors. And that's about you know, 70, 75 pinball machines each and every day that are getting sold back and forth between you guys. A lot of people came into pinball during COVID. Newbies, we like, you know, we so generously call them. But the newbies, you'll see even today on Facebook, you, you see the post where, well, I'm not sure, you know, which machine should I buy that's the best investment? You know, I want to, they see people making money selling machines at a higher price than uh, retail. And so they want to know what's the best machine for investments. Well, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, I'd say, yeah, maybe. Because the numbers, you know, I wrote a couple of articles on pinflation. Pinflation was all over pin side. That's all everybody was talking about, how expensive used pinball machines were getting. From the database, that's wholly supported it. 17%, then another 13%. Well, last couple of years, you know the market has gotten softer. It's gotten softer for new machines. It's gotten softer for used pinball machines. And so they're not really an investment. And, uh, you know, prices are flattening out. They're still higher. I'll show you a chart in a minute by error. They're still higher than what they've ever been. But... They're flattening out at least. So the answer to our pinball is a good investment. I'll go to Woody and Buzz. You know, be okay that they're not, they're not investments. You know, they are not financial assets that you're going to go out and purchase and hope. But, you know, there are some, if you were lucky enough to get a Pirates retail, great. But pick the next one, you know. Are you going to be right on that one? Or are you going to be Godfather? Oh, sorry. Uh but they're not investments. They're used machines. They're toys. Okay? They're expensive toys, but they're toys. If they're not toys to you, then they're depreciating assets for you because you're an operator. Uh, just quickly here, just to look at the prices over some from 2019. And this goes from oldest machines. This is the average price per year. So for EMs, whoops, for solid states, for alphanumerics. For the Golden Age, the Stern DMDs. Uh, no, they have it. That's the thing, especially with inflation, you have to take it out. Well, what was the inflation rate that year? And I, I haven't done that. You're right. Uh, so some of these are actually flat or negative due to inflation. Uh, but Golden Age, and then you can see when you get into the modern DMDs, there was a peak in 2022. The same thing with the uh, LCDs. There was a peak in 2022, and it's come down. So in 2022, during COVID or the end of COVID, you average price was over $10,000 for machines made during this period, and now they're back down to 8,500. And you you can see that in a lot of the uh, the data. Um, we'll skip both through this, but just qu quickly, modern machine. You know, a lot of the newer models just don't. You know, hold their value that they that people who want to see them as investments think they would. In fact, I there's a site called alts.co and it's an alternative investment site. So people are looking at using things as financial investments. I recently uh, did an interview with them talking about our pinballs and investment. I think that's coming out in November. So it's at alts.co. Uh, we'll skip over those. Uh, want to leave a just a couple of minutes for questions. 
thank you to the pinball to the poor man's pinball uh, tribe uh, I'm part of that group it's a crazy group of um, yeah drew and Ian and the rest of the guys uh, and kineticist thank you Colin for uh, publicizing some of my articles and also for uh, pinball restoration which is uh, a site you can find on pinballprices.com uh, and if you want to help out I, I do this completely on my own I have been uh, and if you go to the website and you want to contribute and help me keep this it's an ad free site you'll never see pop-ups you never have to close an ad to get to the price you never have to pay for a subscription we're not behind a firewall uh, we're not behind uh, you know uh, paywall yeah thank you uh, you know we're not on patreon so any way you can help out would, would be great questions John, I can hear you. <laughs> uh, my brother does pinball restorations. I do some, uh, and he does mostly EMs and. Uh, yeah, he's he's made some money on that. Uh, I don't know if you calculate that's from buying that's from buying the machine, buying the paint and other things. If you count the labor, no, uh, not at all. I don't think anybody anybody could. But uh, it, it's just done as a hobby, and you know you hope not to lose a lot of money. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. A info to the most expensive toy. There was there was a pinball machine. Uh, a auction from Elton John's apartment in Atalanta, Elton John machine, for sixty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. One toy. Yeah, it's yeah. Some of the machines uh, are out there, and, and like I said, Supreme and a couple others that have surprisingly sold for huge amounts. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, if you do sell and you want to contribute to it, there are, I do accept verified private sales. So if you contact me and you know, and send it in, say, hey, I I sold, uh, you know, ACDC for this amount of money, I'll I'll put it on there and list it as a verified private sale. It does help. Uh, more and more people are not listing their price on Pinside. More and more sales are going to Facebook Marketplace, which, you know, that's a private sales so there's no way to get uh, price information there uh, so the the options for the database get smaller but I hope you can uh, utilize it now and it's great for buying and for selling so well thank you thank you all.